All right. Good morning, everybody. All right. So we're going to talk and we're just going to show you what the uh, uh, our pilot sites have been doing um, since they've had it in their hands. Uh, we've been working uh, with uh, our pilots. We have 12 pilots. By the end, we had 11. So we had a really good number of schools uh, ranging from uh, elementary, middle, high school, special ed, um, district schools. So we had a wide range of schools that we wanted to use because we came into this and gave them a blank slate. And uh, we had no pre uh, preconceived notions on what we wanted this to be. We wanted the schools to decide on what it looked like and how it worked for them um, because we want them to use it. We want you guys to use it. And um, the the benefits to what why we're doing this, and Mike touched on a little bit of these things, uh, obviously the schools don't have to buy servers anymore for SharePoint. So it's gonna save the principals money. Uh, if you look at, at a global scale, that's 180 plus schools that are saving uh, district six, over $6,000 each. So you can see how much money that's gonna save the district. Uh, collaboration uh, will be uh, centralized here at the district level, uh, as Mike said earlier. So the TCs no longer have to worry about backups. They no longer worry about updates. They don't have to worry about any of that type of thing dealing with the SharePoint sites. So it takes a relief off the TCs now a little bit. Um, plus, we make sure all the backups are done. We make sure all the software is updated. The hardware issues are all de dealt with here. Um, again, Mike talked, touched on this earlier. It's accessible anywhere. You can be at home, on vacation, wherever you want to work. And if you choose to work on vacation, you can work on vacation. Um, and you'll have access to that. Um, so that's one of the huge benefits now to them. So you're not locked into your just your school. What's it going to look like? Well, it's really up to you. Uh, we're going to give you more options in the future um, uh, on colors and stuff like that. But I wouldn't concentrate on coloring quite right now. Uh, let's let's concentrate on getting your content there and learning how to use it. If any, how many here uh, have used SharePoint in the, in the district? All right, even on the outward facing sites. So one, two, so, okay. So got a couple of you. Um, the Most of you here should have been assigned by the principal to come to this training. So you're gonna get uh, a, quite a few hands-on experiences. You're gonna actually build out sites, uh, your own site, um, uh, and actually build things so, uh, throughout the day. So you're gonna learn how to use this hands-on today. Um, <clears throat> well, like I said, that's up to you what it's going to look like. And again, I'm not uh, totally concerned about color right now. Everybody has a default look right now. Uh, since the sites are not outward facing, the district really is not pursuing or worried about what it looks like color wise. Uh, it's only going to be uh, um, uh, what you choose to do later on. Uh, you can uh, use any one of the themes. We're going to have themes possibly later on created, but uh, right now their themes are not working totally right now. Uh, so, uh, but we're also going to have other ways to coloring. Uh, some people may, uh, may know what CSS is. Uh, CSS is a way to, to control colors within a, a, a web page. We're going to have accessibility to that as well. But again, not something we're worrying about right now. So you can add your own logos, crests, both, all within your page. So. Um, <laughs> If you think about uh, how your site will be created if you're an elementary school, uh, you're probably going to think more of the grade level, first, second, third, fourth grade levels as your subsites. Um, at high school and middle school, probably more of a curriculum, English, math, science uh, type of thing. So you can have your subsites have their own images, you know, banners or, you know, uh, uh, logos for each grade, which makes it more fun for them and more customized look for them so because they're going to want to you want to make them use it you want them to make it enjoy it and have as much information as possible <clears throat> so what's going to happen to the old internal sharepoint site well as of today you should not be using your your old inter, uh, internal site your new site is what you should be using from now working forward uh, it is eventually uh, once the new site is up and running which is today You'll be locked, you're going to be locking down your internal SharePoint site. So what I'm going to ask you guys, if you are the TC, uh, please add myself to your internal share, not the new one, 
with the internal SharePoint site as an owner to the site. So I can lock it down or, and work with you on locking it down because the, everything that's, uh, um, the only one aspect to your uh, old site is still gonna be used. Uh, the ticket system, the heat ticket system. Right now, the district does not have a district-wide solution right now. Uh, originally, there was going to be one, at the, and we were gonna pilot that at the same time we were piloting this. That didn't happen, they fell behind. So um, they, we don't have something right now. So we're, we have a hybrid, we're gonna be still using your ticket system for the school, but we're gonna show you how to embed it in your site, your new site. Eventually, we're gonna, we're gonna work on a temporary solution till the district comes out, because by our business case for this project, we need to remove SharePoint from your internal servers completely. So that's part of the business case. So no more using your old sites. Everybody got that? All right. Uh, the people that are not TCs, please email your TC and ask them to add me to their your sites internally, please. Uh, tech requests again will stay in the, uh, the district system will come online. Uh, once the new tech system, the old site will be gone and removed completely, like I said. And now let's take a look at some of the what the pilots have done. All right. All right, so I'm gonna start out with Blankner. Blankner uh, is one of our uh, you know, hybrid schools. They're middle school, elementary, K through eight. Uh, eight. Uh, so they're, yes? Oh, so you're just uh, being, uh, I got you, all right. So K, uh, Blankner is one of the uh, K through eights and my mouse is not working because it's not plugged in. Mousey mouse. All right, there we go. All right. So some of the things that you're going to notice here, um, the with Blankner's uh, site here, you're going to see uh, amongst all the schools, there's going to be a common theme. Uh, the front page is going to have Your left navigation here is gonna be the uh, links to your libraries and lists to that site that you're on. So right now we're looking at all of what we're calling the parent site. This is the top level site to the, your, your SharePoint. Um, and in the left side is gonna be your navigation to your document libraries and lists. Across the top is gonna to be a li uh, links to all your subsites. So this is where you're gonna see your first grade, second grade, third grade. Uh, Magnolia is a special school. They're K through uh, 12 uh, and kids from 23 uh, to 22 years old. So they have elementary, middle, high, and postgraduate. Uh, so they've set theirs up a little bit different. So basically they uh, have a, an elementary subsite where they have all their uh, announcements and everything that is uh, dedicated just to their elementary department. Um, the uh, a, a regular elementary school, as you can see here, they have, they're using first, second, third, fourth grade, fifth grade across the top. Uh, every one of the center of the body is gonna have announcements and your calendar, master calendar. Uh, how many of you guys are still using public folders for your calendars in school? Uh, that should stop, um, and for a lot of reasons. Um, one, you're gonna want your master calendar from your SharePoint be that calendar for you from now on. Uh, one advantage is, is that you no longer have to worry about having not have access to it outside the school anymore. So this is accessible for outside the school, um, whereas your public folder is not unless you're VPNed in. Uh, this calendar in SharePoint can also be uh, linked to your Outlook. So with a, and we're gonna show you how to do that later. So there's, a, a, you can synchronize a, a specific Outlook calendar 
a share uh, to our SharePoint this calendar to your Outlook, and then so when you make a change to the calendar, you really don't ever have to come to the site. It automatically will show up on the on the site any changes. Um, on the right hand side is going to be your resource links and how they're displayed uh, is by choice. Uh, just like the calendar, uh, North Lake is is decided to show a whole calendar the whole month. But if you come to something like Freedom Middle, they decide they wanted to show their calendar in a list format. So they show the most current uh, event is at the top and work their way down. And I think he's displaying 10, uh, yeah, 10 uh, uh, events at a time. So uh, that's the way he chose to do it. Uh, you have resource links on the right hand side over here. Um, they're going to be pre-populated. You guys should already see those on yours. A lot of it's pre-populated with just generic information uh, that all schools uh, is um, would need. But you are going to control that yourself. You can add, remove as you choose, uh, and we'll show you how to do that because that's just a, a basic list. Uh, in a, in um, the, if you click on your resource list name, you'll see a list of where you can add or edit or remove. Uh, the uh, links directly. Um, so this is Freedom, and you can see Freedom uh, is, uh, and we're, you're going to listen to what he talks about, uh, how he uses it, and he's very passionate um, on, uh, on uh, technology in general. Uh, so you're going to see, and, and you'll be amazed on the type of things that he's doing with his site. And it's going to make you want to want to do this for your schools because it, it just, he's totally digital in his school. There's really no paperwork, paper in his school at all. So it's, it saves him money, not only uh, um, not buying servers, but it saves him money on ink, paper, toner, all these things that are un unnecessary for him now. So he's really, really been falling behind on this. Uh, and, and following up on this and, and done a great job. Um, a middle school, this is Lake Nona. Uh, you can see here they're choosing to do podcasts on theirs as well as a, a blog. So uh, again, but you can see the commonalities between all the sites. They have uh, announcements and master calendars and, and you guys have that currently now set up, but you can choose to move things around. You can choose to remove things uh, uh, you can change the way it's viewed to a list so, or, or, or as, like I said, the other schools have done. Um, let's see. Lake Nona also chose they would like, they wanted a little widget on their site where they can see their uh, weather, uh, see our radar. So basically what our schools have done and probably is a, a, a good example for all of the schools is they're making their SharePoint site their homepage to their school computers. So when a teacher logs onto the computer, they bring up Internet Explorer, this is what they see first. So TCs, if you're out there, you can use VC to make these your new home pages. It's really easy. Um, and then, so all the information that the, uh, uh, is related to their school is at their fingertips. Live uh, and able to access immediately. Principal decides they want to go ahead and um, uh, put out an announcement it's right there immediately. So the, all they have to do is a teacher go to the website and see that announcement from the principal immediately. They know what's going on. Um, the weather was important for them because uh, when uh, classes dismiss, if it's bad weather, lightning storms, obviously they hold the kids. They don't go to buses. So this gives uh, the teachers the ability to look immediately at what they uh, at the weather. Uh, they've chose also to create multiple subsites as well. Uh, they have an administration subsite. What this allows uh, the administration to do is to collaborate uh, just within uh, themselves. So every subsite you can have separate uh, permissions, different permissions. So everybody does not have access to the administrative subsite, only the administration does. So they're able to collaborate on documents work together even if they're not in the same building anymore say there are separate ones at elc right now doing some work but yet they can still work it in the same document uh, common core it's a big word here in the district now um, they have a separate sub site here for common core 
for the teachers so all that information that is about common core is there at their fingertips to get to their teachers they you can see they have sub sites for discipline e l l again i don't know all the acronyms for the school so i don't know what it would what it means instructional math and you can see they've gone by the way the curriculum obviously as well as their middle school north lake park they changed they did a slight difference in their resource links uh, they decided to categorize them. They had enough of them that they didn't want people having to scroll up and down constantly to find the links. So they decided to categorize it. So when you click on the particular category over here, it expands the links so they can go right to them. It's just, again, these are all choices. And these are all things that you can do on your site pretty simply. Um, the uh, newsletter, uh, we have the ability to have the newsletter on your site. Lots of principals like to do newsletters. Um, so they can post their newsletter on here. The school, you can go to your, I think North Lake Park uses one. Let's see, I think it's all the other bulletin. Yeah, see? So here they have their uh, newsletter. It shows the most current one in a viewer right on the page. And then they have an archive for all the other uh, uh, our, uh, newsletters from the previous ones. So the most current one will always show in the window and then the other ones in the archive. So it, it allows the principal to continuously give information to the staff. Uh, here's a high school to look at, Olympia. Uh, they have look like they went to a list format for their calendar. Uh, you can see that they have a lot of other lists uh, on, uh, on the left-hand side here. Copy requests, lab calendars, um, and things like this. So now tech requests. So when a person uh, at another, at, say a teacher has a, a document that they want to use in the classroom, it's a ditto sheet, or ditto sheet, that's old school, right? Uh, <laughs> ditto sheet. But uh, that they're working with the class and they want copies. Well, we don't, principals really don't want the teachers to print off those documents in the classroom and waste toner. Because uh, we all know that toner on a printer is a lot more expensive than toner on a copy machine. Pennies on a copy machine, 20, 30 cents per printer. It could be very expensive. So what they've done here and a couple of other schools also is a copy request. What a copy request is, is basically a standard uh, uh, custom list that when uh, a teacher wants to, to um, have uh, something copied, they fill out a form, they come into the copy request, they fill out a form, they, and then what happens is it builds a, 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 the ability to attach that document that they want. Um, and I think this one's working. Where is his copy request? There it is, copy request, sorry. No. So my uh, so this is their copy request, and you can see that all this all these columns have names across the top. That's metadata. That is the title. So the metadata, the, the status, uh, uh, the finishing number of copies. So they can actually filter on say a room number, so you, or or even a teacher's name who requested it. So they can see how many things they've copied. So what happens is is come on. So what happens is when they come in here and they click on a new item, they now have this list, this uh, form that f comes up where they're going to fill out all this information, attach the, make an attachment of the file they want copied, and when they submit it to that library, because every library can be set up with an alert, so when the copy person who's in charge of copies in the office will now get an alert with an email saying that, hey, this particular person here with this information wants this document and sends the attachment in that email. And then they're able to then just send it out with, to the copy machine. And it's, I think it's next day. I think they have next day service uh, at the school. So as long as it's in the day before, they usually have it come out. So this, again, saves time because you know time and money because it's, you know it's being uh, copied at the right way, the right way the school wants to do it. So... Huge, huge thing, and you're going to see that in his video uh, later on on how important alerts are to him, because alerts he uses alerts on everything, and not just to himself. 
to anything, anybody who has responsibilities with, with certain things. And you can see uh, he has his, all his interventions. People are responsible for all these interventions, and they get alerts when somebody writes something to those lists, to those um, libraries that are that they're responsible for those things. So his whole school uses this. And doesn't give him an option, and you'll see that that's his, his biggest thing is they don't have an option. This is how we're doing it. It's not, eh, if you want to, use this. If not, no. There is no options. And it's freedom middle? Yes, freedom middle. And you'll see in his video, he's very, very vocal about that. So, let's see. What else do I want to show you? Okay, Winter Park High School. Another one of our uh, pilots. He, Winter Park is, was a pre-pilot on the original Outward Facing websites, too. Uh, so they have always been on the forefront with us on being able to, because we want these things to be successful. So we try to get the most successful groups to stay involved. Um, so you can see how that they have designed theirs. Um, again, we're all the common themes are still here. We this is again, and the reason for that is because you, these guys designed it. The schools decides we want it to look like this. We're going to use this. So every school had their input. That's why you don't see many things change from site to site. And that's why when you look at your templates right now, it's, they're identical. It's because this is what has worked for them and it's done a really good job. Um, tech requests, and this is what I was going to show you, or talk about earlier. See, the tech request is the only thing that's going to be an issue for us because it has to go back to your internal site right now until we have something uh, district-wide. And the, what this means to you is tech requests are the only things that are not going to be um, accessible outside your school. So when you come to your tech request site, if you're at home, it's going to be a, uh, let's see, let me go to Freedoms, and they have a tech request. I think it's down here, yeah. And you can see on this one here, there's a page viewer right here. So you never leave the site. So you're still on 2013. It's just viewing that WSS site in a, in a page viewer. So it looks like you're still there. We, didn't, we wanted to keep it as seamless as possible. Um, but again, what's going to happen when you're outside the district, this area right here is either going to give you an error or stay white. But again, we're working on something to replace that. But we have been so busy that we haven't even had a shot, chance to look at it right now. Um, let's see. I think I'm going to cut it like this short, and then we're going to um, just go into more hands-on. So that's all. Any questions about what you guys have seen so far? Anybody getting a little excited? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> well, I mean, this is all going to benefit you guys. I mean, this is, this is for the schools. Um, you know, being able to, to have this access and now things that your principal doesn't have to worry about because we had issues in the past with your internal ones, big time, because we don't, we're not responsible for those. The schools are. And we've had, you know, crashes and data loss and all that stuff. So that's stuff that's not going to happen anymore. So, and we want you guys to use it. These guys are the forefront. This is, you guys are the ones that are going to be pushing this stuff to your school. That's why we, administrators are supposed to be here uh, from every school. That's why uh, uh, it, it, it just, you need to have the backing of the, the principal to, to make this work. That's why I want you guys to listen to Doug, because Doug is a principal with passion. So he, he, listening to him later, you'll start to see why, why it's benefited his school so much. All right? Well, the TCs, it, it, remember, the principals own the sites. So if, if you're looking to, uh, and, and Doug is going to say in his video, and he says it all the time, if you want access to his site to see what he's doing, email him. He'll give you read, read access to it uh, so you can see what it looks like and see what they're doing. Uh, he has no problems with that. He is very, uh, he works hand in hand with his, in, with his learning community, doing a lot of things. Uh, um, get in, in teaching uh, principals what they can do uh, and how this benefits, benefits them. So um, 
don't think of this as your warehouse dropping in all your stuff. So quick uh, uh, look at this. Look at your data that you have currently on your SharePoint sites, on your internal one. When you move that data over to the new sites, because you guys are the ones doing that, um, look at this as a spring cleaning. Don't bring it over if you're not using it. If it's there in two years and it hasn't been touched, don't bring it over. Look at your data. Look at your documents. Okay, we haven't used this chunk of stuff. Archive it off. DVD, make a file share on your server somewhere else. Dump all those files for archival purposes only. And then just move in the data that you want for the new school year. And we're going to talk about later on a little bit more. Hector's going to talk about our different file systems uh, on, on, on the left-hand side here. Um, master documents. On your, school, your sites, we made a little change. We're calling them school documents instead of master documents. Uh, shared library, school, in, uh, school calendars. So as a little, again, that's, that's just because of the, the uh, pilots. We did a little things a little different. Yes? Um, Mike, uh, one of your comments just made me think of something. Right now, the template, uh, you don't have to scroll up and down mm -hmm. to see all, all the information. In fact, one of the schools did categories, so mm -hmm. it wasn't scrollable. Yep. Your comment was, uh, if there's something you haven't used in two years, one of the the TCs I know of one of his schools, the old SharePoint site, there was because it was scroll because the teacher had a scroll, there was a section that they said teachers never knew was there. Of course. So some for of us for us in web design and websites, we want the 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 least amount of scrolling as possible. But it's hard because you can't predict monitor resolution, right? So but these are probably maybe twelve 1224 by 768, you know, 768. So they, you know, but that you, you try to you try to design for the most common uh, resolutions. So on here, on here, what's going to happen is yes, as as long as the more things that you put in the left hand side, it's going to scroll more. The more things that are in the body, yes, it's going to scroll more. The more sites you have across the top, it's going to go to the left and right. So it, it's just choice in how you decide to design. Think about how you want to do this. But you know what? It's a little different when you're doing something like this in the school because you guys are going to teach your teachers uh, and show them what this is going to do and how they're going to use it. So they'll have a little advanced warning. It's not like they're going to you know, fiddle through and try to figure, figure it out. You guys are here. This is a train the train. You are going to explain this to your teachers and show us how it's going to work. Any other questions? All right. Uh, the next thing I think we're going to have, I think, is a break now.